must not read from the book! Hello and welcome back to Podcasting is Praxis. I'm David. I'm here with Rob. Hello. James. Hello. Alistair. Stronger than ever, baby. Mmm, antibodies. And <laughs> also with a special guest returning, Sinan, um, for, for the free one. That's right. Hey, everyone. Speaking and you know what antibodies. that means if Sinan's on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what time it is. <laughs> Sorry, okay, everyone. So, Speaking I, of any boys, did you guys see that thing about the guy who is injecting himself like 30 times with the, yeah. with one of the coronavirus vaccines and he'd like turn his fucking blood to syrup? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's how I'm feeling right now. <laughs> another fucking... Yeah, this, it was another normal day on the uh, Something Awful forums. <laughs> <laughs> what, mm. what, um, what I loved about that, what I loved about that is he's saying, yeah, the doctors thought it was like antibodies. And it's like, no, it's not. It physically can't be. But someone came in and said, "Hey, do you know what else kind of looks like antibodies under without like proper testing? The uh, the fucking um, preservative that's in all of these vaccines in massive quantity. He's basically turned his blood to antifreeze." Oh my <laughs> yes. god! King. This is a, this is a superhero origin story. If yeah. there ever was one, like, the man is immune to cold and the coronavirus. <laughs> what could you want? Yeah. The two things I fear the most. <laughs> But uh, if we're gonna if we're gonna do the reading, then you should really introduce Sinan by his formal title, which is Herald of War. Uh, you know? <laughs> yes, it, it is like yes. that. I don't think we'll bother fucking about. Well, I mean, we could talk about this COVID passport shit and the changes that have come in, which are barely changes. Uh, I mean, the most interesting else. thing about COVID lately was the guy with the fucking syrup blood. So yes, uh, yeah, I feel like we should yeah, just that. move past it, really. Mm, mm. Oh well, it's easy for you to say, isn't it? Fucking fresh off an infection. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just I I'm going around like licking all the doorknobs now just so that I can feel powerful. <laughs> feel something, you know. Uh yeah, okay. Let's let's fuck off COVID then and let's talk about something worse. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about the book that you come on to read, Sinan. Alright. Do you want me to alright. Yeah, do, do you, you can all introduce know... it. Okay, I'll introduce it. The book Oh uh, well hang on, hang on, oh. sorry, if we're gonna introduce it, um I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said... It's called State of Terror by Hillary Rodham Clinton. No! Oh. No! Fuck yes. you! No! We are not do- No! 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 Oh, well, you didn't know what the book was, did you? No, I didn't know what the book was! No! Now, there is, there is a co-author, but I'm not, I'm not going to say it. Yeah, who cares? Because, yeah, no one gives a shit about that bit. We're reading the Hillary Clinton book about Hillary Clinton. Yeah, <laughs> Hillary Clinton, comma, girl boss. <laughs> yeah. Oh, do you know how much I went out of my way to avoid this fucking discourse on Twitter? <laughs> and it's just... Fu- oh. I just brought it to your door. <laughs> yeah, James, <laughs> r- remember when you said that we should probably do something American? We should probably move away from Britain for just a little bit. <laughs> welcome Not like this. Not like this. Monkey. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the monkey paw. <laughs> We've gone from normal island to manifest normality. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so, someone open this, this third to seventh seal already, please. Let's just end it. End it. <laughs> there are so many chapters of this book I've just read. There are 45 <laughs> chapters of this book. And do they have obnoxious titles like the last one? No, no they're actually, just... They're, just, they're just called chapter one. And yeah, so on. oh, that's... sadly. That's disappointing. I was, uh, my expectations have been raised by Jess Phillips, for, which yeah. is a surprising <laughs> feeling to be feeling. What else are you expecting from a hollow technocrat than chapter one to chapter 45? Yeah, like yeah. Jess Phillips has more creativity and stage presence than Hillary Clinton does. You hate to say it, but... All right, shall we uh, kick off? Um, yeah, I let's... thought maybe we could give you, because it's quite, it's a very convoluted book, um, uh, That let, let me say that first. So maybe, Sin, I thought maybe we, would, uh, we could run quickly through some of the main characters and then we, we set off, because maybe that'll help later on when the plot gets wild. Yeah, because... Does it, does it open with my my husband's good friend, Jeffrey Epstein? Or... Uh, <laughs> no, no, but there no. is like an Epstein-y bit. In, yeah, like, that, kind yeah. Of, oh, yeah. yeah. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> there is a an Estini bit. Like it, I'm not kidding. Like, I, I don't. They probably didn't put that on the jacket, did they? <laughs> no. <laughs> but they, um, they, I will also note that Hillary Rodham Clinton, a state of terror, describes her probably during the 2016 election quite well. So, yes. Um, Again, yeah. it's another one of her books where it's descriptive, like what happened, Hillary Rodham Clinton. It's like, yeah, that's it. That's that exactly is, what happened. Yeah. We understand. Well, as we, as we know, like any centrist is just completely devoid of imagination. Well, this in, is in kind all, of what respect. this book demonstrates in a great way, because I did. I, I, I've had to read a lot of politicians' fiction books. And <laughs> had, had to. to. <laughs> I had to because they're the they're the big money makers on Twitch.tv. Um, but the, the the problem is none of them can get over their previous job. Like Tom Watson's um, book was just about a mediocre Labour MP trying to find a bipartisan way to sell NHS data. Like, <laughs> like, did, I mean, like, what more could you say about it than that was basically what he was up to? Um, truly, yeah. truly, the heights that Labour uh, descended and, from when uh, Jeremy Corbyn took over. And this, uh, and this book is essentially what if technocratic girl bosses were in charge of the world? Because yeah, everybody because... loves a girl boss. And so, like a lot of these characters are like stand very obvious stand-ins for real people. Yes. But I couldn't quite get a read on who the president was meant to be, unless it's meant to be Biden by blandness alone. I think it's, I think it's a like a toned-down version of Obama. I think See, it's that's that. what I thought, but like mm. I don't know. It's... Anyway, shall we uh, shall we run through the list? Um, the, yeah. the, speaking of stand-ins, the the exceedingly thinly veiled uh, stand-in for Hillary Rodham Clinton is Secretary newly minted Secretary of State Ellen Adams. Uh, <laughs> Ellen Adams, if you didn't know, is a girl boss. She is the girl boss to end all girl bosses. Uh, just uh, just a question. Do you think they like workshopped that? Is that focus script? Did they go, we need something that sounds like Founding Fathers-esque, so John Adams, 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 let's go with Adams. And then we need something that's got popular appeal and that people recognise as being a girl boss. Well, Ellen's popular. Let's go with Ellen. No, Ellen, Ellen, Adams. Ellen is a reference to a personal friend of hers, a former congresswoman from California. It's explained in the notes at the end of the book. Yeah. Oh my god, oh, there's okay. fucking notes? Oh, oh yeah, 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 don't worry, we got notes, yeah. But is I there wanna... like a reading list to go along with this fucking tedious book? Well, you can I have wish. my show notes if you want, they're 7,100 words long. Jesus you know, see, Christ. I didn't do that. I, I This isn't like the Jess Foots book, because it's fiction, I kind of didn't give a fuck, and I was ill, so I just highlighted <laughs> stuff I found I funny or I like, racist. I like, how, I like how Rob um, was like, this book fucking sucks, I'm going to write my own book in retaliation. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm going to highlight every bit where she makes it as she describes what she thinks people from the Middle East are like. Oh yeah. Um, if it wasn't for this podcast, Rob would be doing response videos on YouTube. That's true. <laughs> I'm going to do a response video to this podcast on my YouTube. I, I've decided now that that's what's going to happen. But yeah, I want to read the description that Hillary Clinton probably wrote for Ellen Adams, right? <laughs> oh, let me see if you have the same quote that I do. <laughs> yeah. In her late 50s... Yes, you have the exact same Yeah, that yeah because it stood out to me immediately. It's yes. like the fourth paragraph. Ellen Adams was medium height, trim, elegant, <laughs> A good set, a good height. dress sense. Yeah, medium height, not like um, <laughs> exactly four foot five foot six. <laughs> yeah, so a, a good dress sense and Spanx concealed her love of eclairs. Her makeup was subtle, oh. bringing out her intelligent blue eyes while not trying to hide her age. She had no need to pretend to be younger than she was, but neither did she want to appear older. It's like you just want. I just, this is how she sees to sort fucking, herself in her late fifties. Yeah, fucking Goldilocks ass, like middle aged yeah. woman. So. Yeah. <laughs> Ellen Adams uh, slash Hillary Clinton uh, used to run a gigantic media conglomerate um, and actually supported the opponent to the current president with that said uh, conglomerate for reasons later revealed in the book. But no, she it's, came... great. it's great that her imagination stretches as far, so far as to have uh, having had a job but not a real one. But yeah, <laughs> but she gave up. Oh, yeah. She gave up her big CEO job uh, in service to the flag and to to, to serve America naturally. Uh, she also has a daughter called Catherine, uh, who is now the new <laughs> head, who is now the new head of News Incorporated, and who seems to be able to take extended breaks. <laughs> news by Incorporated, the, yeah. And by the way, daughter who's like getting these ridiculous journalism jobs for no other reason than being the daughter of a Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Well, she also um, has a son who also has a ridiculous uh, called Gil, uh, who is a journalist <laughs> for truth. Uh, yeah, Gil from uh, that's Gil from The Simpsons. Obviously. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> mm. 
Um, and she also has an assistant girl boss called Betsy. And Betsy looks like June Cleaver, but swears like a sailor. Oh, That's yeah. rough. <laughs> That's the best character in this book. Yes. By, I, 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 I like, by some margin, she is the best character in this book. <laughs> I challenge Hillary Clinton to name a single sailor she knows by name. <laughs> You can't name an admiral either if you're listening to this Hillary Clinton. <laughs> yeah. Um, there is also Anahita Dahir, a junior analyst in the State Department, or as I consistently refer to her in the show notes as Sexiana. Um, Sexiana mm. um, once had sex with a journalist in the sweaty nights of Pakistan. Uh, the journalist may or may not be trustworthy. Um, and she is very good at her job, but also can't stop thinking about how the sexy journalist made her feel in sexy Pakistan. Yeah. Cool. Sexy, sexy Pakistan, not to be confused with regular Pakistan. Yeah, like regular Pakistan. Very unsexy, I find. Stupid <laughs> sexy Pakistan. <laughs> <laughs> the curves on that Pakistan, damn. <laughs> Uh, there is also President of the United States, Doug Williams. Um, I will just read you a quick quote about him and then that should give you enough. He entwined his hands behind his head and rocked while a steward brought him a scotch and a small plate of bacon wrapped scallops and, scallops and deep fried shrimp. So that's Doug Williams present for If you. it is Obama, it's really like, does it feel like a true to life impression of Obama at all? <laughs> Um, it's probably it's probably not. They probably pointedly went, okay, we can't make it Obama, like like in the story, it's going to yeah. cause a scandal. So let's just go with the most white bread president uh, we can come up with. Yeah, they basically went with what Joe Biden would be like. Yeah, but we can't do Obama because that's gonna that's gonna take the limelight off of Clinton. Like <laughs> the last time. <laughs> 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 Yeah, you can read a bit of that bitterness in here, I reckon. Because <laughs> the they really do not like each other at all. Oh, Sid, are you trying to tell me that Hillary Clinton grinds a few axes in this book? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a little bit. All right, so it's, it's, it's chapter one, and it's essentially exposition o'clock. Um, the, our Secretary of State and girl boss, uh, Ellen Adams, returns home from a failed diplomatic trip to Korea and is literally covered in shit in manure for reasons that are never explained in the plot um you get the feeling this happened to hillary clinton at some point that's the thing did you did you say korea sorry yes Yes. uh oh maybe maybe it was a uh, a diplomatic incident with uh like some kind of like small fried uh food stuff that uh, is associated (laughs) with american (laughs) cuisine (laughs) Um, she saw herself in the reflection, hair askew, mascara smeared, clothing disheveled, eyes bloodshot and burning from her contacts. There were lines of worry, of stress that hadn't been there a month earlier at the inauguration. That bright, shiny day when the world was new and all seems possible. How she loved uh. America, this glorious broken beacon. <laughs> <laughs> that inauguration day where, there, every, where hope seemed possible and we thought, we've got to stand that shit out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I should point out, this is, this is post-Trump. Like, yes. post their equivalent of Trump. So the, and he does appear, the Trump character does appear. Um, <laughs> and he is exactly... The way she describes the Trump character makes me... It might go some way to explaining why she loved it so bad against him. <laughs> she, she at least subconsciously understands why she lost. <laughs> uh, yeah, so she apparently, not only is she literally covered in manure, but she has to um, go to a joint session of Congress for a speech that is not the State of the Union, but that is being televised live, but apparently is being held back by 15 minutes, just so Ellen Adams, girl boss, comma, Hillary Clinton, comma, um, can, can join the crowd. And the president's pissed at her, but the speech is, uh, you know, is is important. But the media is already sniping at her because she failed in Korea and she's literally covered uh, in shit. Um, but there's somebody else watching, and that's uh, sexy Anahita De Heer. Um, unlike the pundits, what Anahita De Heer saw was a woman about her mother's age, standing erect, straight-backed, head held high, attentive, respectful, turning towards the man coming towards her, <laughs> calmly awaiting her fate. Her disheveled state only seemed to add, in Anahita's eyes, to her dignity. I, I, I want to stand respectfully. Yeah. And directfully. <laughs> yeah, Hillary Clinton, a woman who knows how to stand normally. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so it, it is about at this time that um, Sexy Anna gets a mysterious message in code uh, that will become important later on. But yeah. for now, it's still time for the president's speech, uh, which, as Sinan says, this is the post-Trump era. So this is the purpose uh. of the speech. A powerful message was being sent to friends and foes alike of continuity, of strength, oh. of resolve and purpose, that the damage done by the former administration would be repaired, that America <laughs> was back. Okay, guys, I'm going to quickly uh, have a quick look at how Joe Biden's doing. Uh, don't tell me, <laughs> don't, don't spoil this for me. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, post speech we find out that um, it it turns out that the shit smearing, the literal shit smearing, may have been a scheme designed by the male president of men uh, in order to do a brave woman down for reasons that we'll get back into later in the plot. Uh, and yeah, so there's there's an after party in the president's lounge, but the president, but uh, our our favorite girl boss isn't there. Why isn't she there? Well, because she went back home, uh, where she is with her mother and her godmother drinking large glasses of Chardonnay. Um, that's, oh, so that's going like to be a recurring theme. That's going to be a recurring theme. It's just, it's just. Are there going to be like lots of little signs where it's just demonstrating how much of a sisterhood girl boss she is? Is that is that basically it? Can't go anywhere without a glass of wine. Mm. No, for real. This this like I already dislike Chardonnay. Um, so this made me dislike it even more. Yeah, it's pretty it's, good. It's like pretty... if you can get a nice Arnaud Chardonnay, like a younger one, it can be. I, pretty... I was, I was about to fucking nope. say. <laughs> I, I was um, about um... to say Chardonnay is like the prosecco equivalent for these fucks. So yeah, totally on brand, Rob. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm not, not much of a, not much of a wine guy. I, it's not my thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Um, it is mine, but that's a different episode. So um, the thing with her being covered in shit for the not state of the union actually turns out to be not bad because <laughs> girl boss things. A meme yeah. has had gone viral on social media after being introduced. Secretary Fuck, Adams, are you trying to tell me that like Hillary Clinton is trying to convince me that she knows what a meme is? Yeah, because <laughs> I do not believe yeah. that for a fucking microsecond. But Alistair, why don't you Pokemon go to the polls? Oh, brother, <laughs> please do not. <laughs> oh, I really She's love the be- idea that Hillary Clinton is sat there and thought, do you know what? I would totally cover myself in shit in public. You know, whenever whenever I think about Hillary Clinton's fucking, uh, you know, Pokemon go to the polls, like toe curlingly cringy fucking uh, video i think of that i always think of that video of jeremy corbyn being shown pokemon go and he's like great looks fine and it's like just <laughs> clearly just like not interest whatsoever this is this is not my thing so let's just move on like yeah. I, I i appreciate that vibe when politicians do that is honest whereas hillary clinton i guarantee you when she was first receiving her briefing she picked up and said so what is uh me me then like i guarantee you <laughs> Yeah, but don't you want to hear what the actual meme is? After being introduced, Secretary Adams walked down the aisle towards her seat for the address, the television camera picking up a rival senator who'd looked at her with disdain and muttered, Dirty woman. (laughs) And that is the meme, because everybody's now, she's a girl boss and I'm a dirty woman too. Hashtag dirty woman. Yeah, I mean, Hillary Clinton is a dirty woman, but not for the so reasons she's... that she's outlaid in this book. So she's covered yeah, in right. literal shit because someone called her a dirty woman and she played up to that. <laughs> wow. Like... That guy must feel so owned right now. <laughs> yeah, who's <laughs> among us? <laughs> I'm not owned, I insist, as I roll around in the open sewer. Yeah, yeah, I think you'll find it was you that put this shit all over me, good sir. <laughs> It's like you know they, they have to they have to get in the essence of the Clinton Foundation's involvement in Haiti, even if they don't actually talk about it. <laughs> A country that's conspicuously yeah. absent from this book. So yeah, she uh-huh. um, she she's actually she's not in trouble. She's actually a girl boss, uh, and she's a hashtag dirty woman. But then an inciting incident occurs. Yeah. And an inciting in- incident. Is that literally what it's called? No, that's no. not what it's No, that's oh, okay. us. Um, well, it's, I, I, I am, an inciting I am ins- incident is the opposite of an exciting incident. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I, I am thoroughly incited. Let's go, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, normally this kind of thing happening in a book would be exciting, but you'll be pleased to know Hillary Clinton has managed to make it really boring. Yeah. Um, I mean, do you want to uh, do, do the inciting incident in it? 
Oh, I, I can describe it. I'm not gonna. I don't want to read any more of this text than I have to. <laughs> <laughs> to be with you. Things you should have said earlier. <laughs> yeah, I really should have stopped this. Um, right, I'll read the. I'll read the. I'll, I'll read. I'll read the the sort of first bit of chapter four where it's described. Yes, right. said Ellen, surfacing immediately from a deep sleep. I wish I could do that. By the way, <laughs> what is it? As she answered her phone, she noted the time, 2.35 a.m. This is going to be a thing. It's obs- This story is obsessed with the time. Yes. It's what time is it right now, the book. What the, so it sounds, sounds a bit what the time is and what they're eating. Yeah. It's yeah. Um, all the novelization. It, 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 it's, um, it's, it's, the, it's the operator thing. It's the who do you want to answer the phone in the middle of the night shit from the old political yeah. ads meets the, meets the operator thing of at tactical 100 hours we will move. <laughs> like, that, that's what it is. Yeah. That's the it's, vibe um, that they're bringing. Yeah, it's um, it's really weird. Um, we, I also couldn't quite get a feel for how long, how much time had passed through the whole book. No, that's very weird. There's a lot of time yeah. compression issues. Anyway, anyway I, should, I should read this. Um, Madam Secretary... Came Charles Boynton's voice. That's an unfortunate name. That's a fucking name and a half. Yeah. (laughs) Deep, somber. There's been an explosion. She sat up and reached for her glasses. Where? London. She felt a guilty wind has fallen. Yeah, London London has has fallen, ladies and germs. (laughs) It's happened. Not US soil, at least. But still, she swung her legs out of bed and turned on the light. Tell me. And that's it. We cut to the situation room. (laughs) And that's it. And if you're wondering uh, where the where London exactly has fallen, where the bomb has gone off, let me give you a little bit of tourist trivia. The 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 bomb is on a, a a bus, a red bus, a double decker bus. Along Piccadilly, just outside Fortnum and Mason, Ellen noted, going what she knew of London, the Ritz just oh. down the street. Hatchards, London's <laughs> oldest bookshop, was lost under the red mark of the bomb. Um, sh- should simply not have been full of books then, should you? That's it. <laughs> well, they're, they're very explosive, so... Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've I've watched the um, the hydraulic press channel try and crush a book before. Yeah, <laughs> um, a little bit. Um. Um, so yeah, and the saddest thing of all is on security cameras uh, that are all around London. Um, they can see that a little girl gets blown up, and that's of course the saddest thing because there's another future girl boss lost yeah. like tears in rain. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's sad when, when, it, when, oh, when a girl in London gets blown up, but only when it's a girl in London. Oh yeah, nowhere yeah. else. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. None of the other stuff is uh, brought. Up. We do get to meet the Prime Minister of Britain in this in this chapter. Yeah, Prime oh, Minister no. Prime Minister Bellington. Guess. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, we're exactly the kind of nonce country that would elect a dickhead called Bellington, wouldn't we? Like, <laughs> apologies to any listeners called Bellington, but I'm and sorry. Would anybody like to take a guess as to who this prime minister resembles? The Theresa P- May. Uh, no, Elliot Hickens. The PM Harris Q, as always, three years into his no. first term, was immensely popular with the right wing of his party and the conservative voting public because he's promised national security and independence from other nations. Is it Cameron? It's Boris. It's obviously <laughs> Boris. Prime Minister Bellington was a hollow man, an upper-class twit yes. with any guts he ah, might have had okay. replaced yeah. by entitlement and random Latin phrases. That's mm. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, a very, very, like, at- atom-thinned veneer over that. Yeah. It's, she hasn't hidden who she, these people are meant to be at all. Like, this, uh, the, the, prime minister, the Prime Minister of the UK, Joris Bonson. Yeah. <laughs> John, remember, remember when that Joris Bonson t- tweet went viral? <laughs> like, <laughs> like I, I was thinking about this the other day, actually, because I, I listened to the episodes we put out like an absolute dork, and I was listening to our I was listening to our episodes we did on the, the Patreon, subscribe to our Patreon, about Olympus Has Fallen, and how they change the real world leaders for like the Western nations, but don't change them for the foreign nations. And the answer for like, I didn't comment it on the time, but it's the same thing here. It's like, you obviously can't refer to the real world leaders of like the nations that are in the tent that are part of your domestic political sphere. Cause that might actually fuck up the politics, but the foreign leaders who are your enemies, you don't give a shit if that messes with their politics or whatever. So go hog wild. It's that it's, it's they dare not put, it's like why the president in this isn't reminiscent of a particular president. 
it's it's to avoid like causing offence and having like political implications off the back of it. And Britain falls under the tent, but not as much under the tent as the US. The US cares less about Britain than Britain does about the US. So, you know, they can do Boris Johnson, but they just have to, you know, they just have to have plausible deniability that really it's not him, nudge wink. Yeah. Like, no, it could that could be any prime minister of Britain. I mean, to be fair. Um, but still. It, it is now also that we learn part of the reason why uh, President Doug Williams doesn't trust the girl boss. And that's because when she was the head of News Inc., um, let me quote again, she'd even created a contest inviting readers to come up with anagrams for his name, Doug Williams. It became a glow dim Lewis. And after his loss in the Iowa caucus, glum Iowa slid. The anagram still followed President Williams around. How much time did Hillary Clinton sit, spent t- like putting Doug Williams into one of those like anagram websites? <laughs> <laughs> fuck, fuck me! What a te- <laughs> also, what a p- here, are, here are a number of anagrams of a name that I've made up. Also, what a powerful news organization must it be if your first turn is, hmm, how do we do something really popular? I know anagrams. That'll do it. <laughs> I hear the kids love anagrams and then memes. <laughs> have I got news for you? Twitter account level level bullshit. Like fuck me. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. doesn't get better. It does not get any better. <laughs> no, I believe it. <laughs> but they make a bunch of references when they're having all of the like um, the intelligence. You know, the five eyes. They're doing a five eyes meeting. They all make a lot of very relevant pop culture references. Oh, oh, is so, I, love, oh, no. I love it when you fucking date your own book by putting pop culture references. Mentioning. Does, it have, <clears throat> does it have like Joss Whedon dialogue crowbarred in as well? No, because I'm oh, not really no, sell no, it. not really. That's, that's no, the only no, saving grace. This, it's references they're making. So it's like this is why Jeremy Corbyn couldn't have been prime minister because to get into the Five Eyes meeting room, you need to correctly identify which ones Ant and which ones Deck before the doors were open. Yeah, I mean, basically, like. It's even older than that, to be fair. Um, does it does it does it have references to Hamilton, or was it before that it time? Don't, I, oh, I've never Jesus. seen Hamilton, Hamilton so references. don't know. Don't care. Yeah, I couldn't really tell you because I've never watched it, but I've got like a general vibe of what it is, and it sounds like fucking shit. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> you're uh, not wrong. More 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 worse news for everybody. Uh, Paris has also fallen. A bomb has gone off on a bus in Paris. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> Who could have done such a thing? Although, to be fair, that is kind of an important question in the book. Yeah, that is sort of a <laughs> central... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like the whole plot. I just get like... In the meantime, though, uh, a sexy junior analyst, Anahita, has a clue. The The secret code she received is important, and it turns out to be the timings of the bombings as well as the bus numbers on which they're going to occur. But who sent it to her? Oh, yes. We're doing that shit Nicolas Cage film where he like, knows all the disasters that are going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> But for yeah, her, she, because she's only a junior girl boss, but she's also sexy, but she moves past her uh, parental training as an ob- obedient Lebanese woman, and she delivers the oh, code... Oh, yeah, that's the whole thing. Yeah, she delivers what? the code to her male scratch? superior. Explain. Um, <laughs> can, we, can we elaborate on the, like, the training that she... What? <laughs> the what? Yeah, yeah, so, like, here... Right, hold on, let me see if I can pull up the exact quote. Um, let me look up the word Lebanese in the book real quick. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. I'd love, love to okay, look up the gonna... word Lebanese in the book. It's already a good sign. I'll read out the exact quote because it, it, I've highlighted it as well. Anahita Dahir had been raised to do as she was told. A good Lebanese girl. She followed the oh, she followed no. rules, had all her life. It wasn't just drilled into her. It came naturally. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah. yeah. Like, so you can see why I gave up on reading this and just tried to find every bit that was vaguely like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, so she tries to give the, the, the code to her male superior of maleness, who, of course, as a male, ignores her. But fortunately, Sexiana has a workaround. By sheer coincidence, one of many in this book, especially concerning Sexiana, she knows Catherine Adams, daughter of Ellen Adams, and also new CEO of News Inc. Um, so they, she quickly gets her on the phone and says, I need, a, I need a meeting with the girl boss Supreme, and thus it is arranged in under 45 yeah. minutes. Yeah, I will just say, Ana, Anahita has like the most, is like the most plot essential person to exist in any book ever. Yeah. <laughs> literally, uh-huh. literally, like, an unbelievable number of coincidences occur around this character. Yeah, or that are she may as well be a fucking Jedi. Yeah. Like, she may as well be a fucking Jedi at this point. Like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> 
But yeah, um, but it gets even worse because we're treated to a very time-sensitive time situation. And there's one last bus to go. It's bus 119, and it's another bus. But on that bus is is brave journalist Gil Bahar, the man of whom Sexiana has sexy thoughts about. In 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 the mysterious uh, Islamabad, where everything is sultry and people but- fuck. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry, was the clue is was the clue the bus number? Because I'm going to be honest, right? I think there's probably a bus one one nine in more than just Islamabad. No, 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 no. This this bus is in uh, Frankfurt, I think. Yeah. All oh, um, right. Okay. But yeah, there's um there's probably a one one nine in Nottingham now. I think about it. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> But in another shocking twist, journalist Gil Bahar isn't just Gil Bahar, he's also Gil Adams. He is the tr- journalist of power's son of Alan Adams, who is fucked by Sexiana, the junior analyst. But yeah. there are so many characters in this that I just do not give a shit yeah, about. <laughs> there's, there's like, there are too many characters and they're all too connected. I can't, I can't fucking deal with this shit. I didn't, I didn't like reading this book, in case anyone's wondering what my, <laughs> no, what my no, headline, no. My headline so you're telling thought me, was. But also, um, you're telling me that Hillary Clinton, for some unknown reason, has an obsession with incestuous dynasties. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> true. true. <laughs> but also, like, the Hillary Clinton stand-in bang the Muslim dude. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah, he's called Baha. Like, I mean... I'm gonna roll the dice on that one. <laughs> Gil, bang, <laughs> um, Gil bang bus, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> Gil, getting on board the Gil Bang bus where the next bomb is going to go off. Anyway, Gil escapes the, the, the bus bomb just in time, but everybody else explodes. So Frankfurt has also fallen. Oh, no. Um, yeah, the famous German capital, Frankfurt. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah. So why, why don't uh, the, the you know, security services of the United States know more of the thing? Why don't know anybody? Well... Says uh, proudly, says our proud leader. Um, it's because the previous administration screwed up everything it touched. It poisoned the well, poisoned our relationships. We're leaders of the free world in name only. The, our our network, uh, the, our intelligent network, no longer exists. Our allies distrust oh us. Oh my god! So yeah, right. we so let it happen. This is we all let them in- the fault no, look- of the previous administration. Yes. The, none of yeah. this, none of this, from the administrations previous to that. No, not at all. <laughs> we let yeah. it happen. Fuck we off. let them in. Russia, the Chinese, that madman in oh. North Korea. And here in the administration, in high positions, <laughs> can we really trust them doing a good job? Yeah. God, oh, I hate North when the Korea. guy that was president, like, no more than four years ago, let North Korea fall into the hands <laughs> yeah. of fucking Kim Jong-un. <laughs> yeah, they briefly got it back, and then <laughs> Trump lost oh, it. Oh, no. Lost it down the back of the sofa. I do like I do like how uh, completely unsurprisingly this uh, this book completely elides the fact that you know the the fucking continuity of American politics pretty much you know yeah. required that something like Trump came along eventually and it's like oh no everything bad was just specifically the previous four year like- administration <laughs> nothing prior to that was bad in any way how quickly we move on from the likes of George W Bush right of all yeah, like, the I, fucking things here for them to be banging on about the Trump administration was the foreign policy part of it. Like, <laughs> come on to fuck. <laughs> it was like the one bit where they did measurably fucking better. Oh, no, there's a whole bit later on where uh, President not Trump turns out to have also withdrawn from Afghanistan, and that's really bad, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, super strange how that happens. Um <laughs> But yeah, um, so off uh, girl boss uh, Secretary Adams goes to Frankfurt because she has to be there to do the investigation herself because it turns out the three bombs are only the start. There's an even bigger plot afoot and the only person who can solve it is the girl boss. <laughs> That's it, yeah. And, so now we're Inspector Girl Boss. Yeah, and junior analyst Sexiana has to come along but she has a secret exclamation mark Oh, a no. secret exclamation mark that doesn't sound good yeah it's really oh. unfortunate it sounds that, that, uncomfortable yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes and then this is where we find out that the man who is uh, behind the, the bus bombings is um, a guy called Bashir Shah and he is also an arms dealer much like <laughs> the second movie <laughs> much like London mm. has fallen this also has a arms, shadowy arms dealer from the Middle East as a bad guy 
Yeah, who has very specific views on um, which person should have been the caliph after Muhammad. Yeah. He has very, very specific <laughs> views to the point that he will not work with specific countries despite being an arms dealer. <laughs> do, you know what, do, you know what this, do you know what this comes off to me? There's, there's like three different things going on here, right? Number one, um, Hillary Clinton is demonstrating what she has learned doing the job um, mm-hmm. And she's clearly learned about the difference between Sunni and Shia. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> that, that, that's going on. That, that's what's absolutely appearing in, in the text, right? Number two, um, all of this suggests that Hillary Clinton has about as strong a grasp of international relations as she does about domestic. Oh, right? if you want some <laughs> grasp of foreign relations, let me give you this. Ellen Adams knew from reading her briefings that there were many bad actors out there, men and women who cared for nothing and nobody in pursuit of their aims. Uh, Assad in Syria, no. al Qurashi in the Islamic State. Oh, Kim they Jun- love bringing up, like, I love bringing up Assad, just like, because <laughs> not related to anything else that we've been talking about so far. Kim Jong-un <laughs> in North Korea, and though diplomacy would not allow her to say it officially, privately she would add Ivanov in Russia to that list. <laughs> I also find it incredible that the name for the Russian president is basically the Russian equivalent of Johnson. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the, the, the thing is, like, it's obviously a work of propaganda, though, right? Because obviously they've got to enforce the line and drum it in continuously for the gullible rubes who are going to buy, read, and believe this book, right? But it's just. There is a there is a little telling thing where it's like, who do we make the villain? Make him an arms dealer because arms dealers are the ones who cause war, right? Like, they are the ones who furnish the weapons, therefore they're the ones causing the war, right? Only when they don't have an office in London. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Like, you, you beat me to it, David. Um, it's, it's just it's staggering. It's amazing. I love this shit. But no one compared to Bashir Shah. He wasn't just bad or wicked, as her grandmother might have said. Bashir Shah was evil, cre- intent on creating hell on earth. <laughs> But now he's gone beyond the usual evil because what he's also been doing is uh, sending Ellen Adams an anonymous b- anonymous birthday car in card in Urdu and in English every year. Oh damn! Horrible, <laughs> yeah. horrible behavior. I hate to receive birthday cards. But now he's Funny become time. even worse because now he's also developed a fully fledged nuclear weapon pipeline where he can supply everything from the materials to the factories to the scientists. So da da da. It's great. It's a great. Uh, I, I especially like the bit where Hillary Clinton explains the difference between Iran and Saudi Arabia. That I enjoyed. <laughs> that that was very good. She's 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 like, did you know Saudi Arabia are Sunni? I'm like, yeah, that was pretty simple to me <laughs> for me to understand. I can't be honest with you, Hillary. You were you you were Secretary of State for how long? And we've just come to yeah. <laughs> come to this. Um, but but for but we get a little side plot because uh, Sexiana also meets uh, Gil, son of uh, son of Adams. Um, and it's, it's, it's sexy time again, just a little bit. Uh, they meet in, in his hospital bedroom. She took her hand, so familiar, a hand that knew her body perhaps better than she herself did. Oh. <laughs> oh. Fun. Uh, Paul, this is getting into Paul Mason's sex territory. Fun, like oh. heady. Ex- if the word chrysanthemum appears anywhere in this, I'm out. <laughs> Fun, no, heady, exciting, sneaking around in a city filled with deception, duplicity, those steamy, sultry days and nights in Islamabad. Everyone so young, so vital, so firm, so certain. Life teeming all around them while death waited in the marketplace. But, like, Islamabad is like a normal city, mostly. <laughs> like, what the fuck is going on? It's like mostly a normal city, as far as I'm aware. Like, what it, is I think go- this is. This is a very cursed insight into what gets Hillary Rodham Clinton going. <laughs> Sleepless in Islamabad. That's what yes. she wants to be. Yeah. Um, so it turns out that the secret Cody message came from uh, sex came that came to Sexiana came from Iran's chief nuclear scientist, apparently. Um, and just also, FYI, if you didn't know, uh, Sexiana's uncle is that chief nuclear Iranian scientist. Because Sexiana yeah, because it, knows oh. is literally related to everybody in the plot. <laughs> yeah, and she she didn't even know she was Iranian. She thought she was Lebanese. Yeah, like yeah, <laughs> a thing that like blows my mind <laughs> as a plot hook. Like, turns out her dad lied to get into the U.S. And I'm like, yeah, he wouldn't be the first person <laughs> ever. And it actually, to be fair, it's really funny how her uncle and her dad are tied to a very very famous world event. 
<laughs> like one of the most famous oh yeah no you can just in, go ahead like, and tear that down let's fight like yeah, whatever so like they had the 1979 revolution in iran the islamic revolution and they uh had hostages at the u.s embassy but guess who was who were the two people holding the like u.s citizens hostage with a gun to their head <laughs> with a gun to their head a fucking dad and uncle <laughs> for like, fuck's sake and they revealed this by showing a newspaper picture of them and it's like how could you not have figured this out earlier <laughs> it's in the public domain like mm. And this is, now we get into a bit where, like, why is all this happening? And this is a, a chapter that I have called General Exposition, because this is where a general, mm. literally a general, uh, explains much of the plot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Uh, it goes far deeper than Eric Dunn, brackets, not Trump. Um, there are elements inside the United States unhappy with the direction the country is moving in. They're using him. They see not Trump as the only chance to stop the erosion of the American way. Not because he has a vision, but because he can be manipulated. They hate America's diversity and the changes it's brought. They see it as a threat to themselves, their livelihoods. They think of themselves, see themselves as patriots. You must have seen them at the demonstrations. True believers, neo-Nazis, fascists. They, their country, that's how they see it. Us and them, they're as, as radicalized as Al-Qaeda, domestic terrorists. Wee goes the horseshoe. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just like the worst shit. It is an like, alliance between the Proud Boys and uh, uh, the most Al-Qaeda. evil Al-Qaeda Islamic arms dealer you've ever met. That... That's the greatest horseshoe that I ever saw, was the one that put anarchism <laughs> and, like, jihadism next to each other. Yes. That was the best fucking horseshoe that I'd ever seen. so powerful. Fam- famously, like, Wahhabism has the same political <laughs> Listen, <laughs> dimensions as anarchism. Critical support to my comrade cousins. Like, what yeah. else can I say? <laughs> Jesus. But yeah, I, I think I even put that horseshoe in my horseshoe theory video because it melted my brain so bad. And I was like, <laughs> I cannot explain how fucking awful this is in like in normal terms. So you have to look at it. <laughs> so yeah, because uh, President not Trump pulled out of Afghanistan, uh, the Taliban were brought back, who brought back Al Qaeda, as well as another Wait, even what? more even. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yes. oh, I see. Oh, I see. What? Oh, okay, because because Trump yeah. said that we were coming out of Afghanistan. Now that's why all yeah. the bad things are happening. And Never mind the preceding twenty years. And Pakistan is sort of semi behind this nuclear bomb plot because. If this goes ahead, they would be in control of Al Qaeda, who would be in control of Afghanistan. Um, so you know that that's why that happens, and also because yeah, of the okay. Rus- the Russians, who are in all this for reasons that I that that really don't get explained anywhere in this book. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we've briefly been uh, to several countries already, so let's go off to Oman. I'm heading to Oman to meet with the Iran- Iranian foreign minister. Are you insane? demanded assistant Betsy. You can't do that. They might kill you or even kidnap you. You know, that thing that would definitely happen. Unexpectedly, yeah. that was a tri- there was a laugh down the line. President Williams did suggest that when he okayed the trip. And for some reason, really <laughs> passing hu- human understanding, not only does she bring along uh, Sexiana, the, the plot catalyst, but she also brings along her daughter, the CEO media lady, for reasons that I really don't understand why that is happening. <laughs> oh. oh yeah now we're gonna see what how you're meant to behave in front of iranian ministers uh yeah, yeah but it's first briefly time to introduce yet another uh member of the uh of the family oh fucking must we come on <laughs> <laughs> this is uh uh sexy anna's uh sexy muslim cousin uh who is doing cheerful modern islam and wears a colored headscarf mm. Uh, she and it turns out later on that she is actually the one who sent the codes to Sexiana in a you know weird plot twist that is not really well explained. Um, so it turns out that maybe the Iranians uh, blew up the bomb, blew up the buses, but that was to prevent three nuclear scientists from doing more evil. So they actually did it to try to stop Bashir Shah uh, to do more nuclear things, and that means with a brief layover in Oman, off we go to Tehran. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake <laughs> love to go to Tehran lovely place yeah, yeah. God, I can't wait for sexy Tehran to come out they said it would be a 2021 release but they've had to deny it <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, and it turns out that at least one, maybe more people inside the president's current inner circle may be traitors in cahoots with the arms dealer. But who is definitely in cahoots with the evil armed dealer is former president, not Trump. Because Bashir Shah's assistant rings him and says, I'm cancelling for lunch because I have to fly to Pakistan as well. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, <laughs> love to love to do that. Oh god, it's this is about the time where I just like fucking gave up on the book. <laughs> like this is where I was like, you know what? I don't care anymore. I'm done. I, I'm I done only with... have I only have so minutes in my life, uh, so many minutes in my life, and this is using them all up. <laughs> I, I like. I, I I don't know. I, critical support, sitting on this. Like I don't know how you do as much as you do. Frankly, <laughs> I had to out before. I, I was I was reading this during my like downtime at work, and I was like, this is this is not worth my time. I would rather watch a YouTube video of a man making cursed cocktails than do this. The, the, <laughs> um, the Silk Road was far from smooth, as Alexander the Great, oh Marco Polo, Genghis Khan, and others had discovered to their peril. The yeah. Silk Road, yeah. the actual Silk Road. Yeah, made of actual silk. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was told. Like, yeah, why, why else would it be called that? <laughs> exactly. No one, no one correct us. Um, yeah, but fortunately, um, we have now landed in Iran, and not only does uh, Secretary Girlboss Adams get a meeting with the minister, she actually gets face to face with the Ayatollah. Oh no! <laughs> uh, oh dear. Who yeah. could have seen this coming? They reveal him like he's fucking Palpatine. Yeah. It's, so <laughs> yes. good. it's so fucking good. Are there like deep, deep strings in the background sort yeah, of thing? Yeah, like fully. It, it could only have been more Palpatine if he was sitting on a chair looking out into the vast expanse of space then turned around. That's the only way it could have been more Palpatine. There's a, there's a chorus of deep-voiced men or like adding a background to it yeah. just for ambiance. <laughs> so <laughs> Grand, Al- Grand Ayatollah Hosrabi. Welcome to the party. Yeah, um, <laughs> this is the worst. All I can hear thing. is Palpatine saying "Inshallah" in my head now, and it's fucking great. Yeah. Inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> Ellen stood up and met his grey eyes. There was curiosity there and gravity. She wasn't fooled. He was a man who had certainly, who had almost certainly proved of the murder over the years of th- countless people. And hours ago, oh no! To ki- Imagine that. <laughs> yeah. Imagine like, someone yeah. like that being in, Go- control, in control of a state apparatus. <laughs> that's, that's, how Hil- that's how Hillary Clinton knows to recognise it because she sees it in the mirror <laughs> every game. Every game. game. <laughs> yeah. Just hours ago, to kill three people, he'd o- ordered the slaughter of more than a hundred innocent men, women, and children. Not something that the US, of course, would ever dream of doing. Yeah. But apparently, Iran and and the evil Ayatollah and Ayatollah Palpatine um, will <laughs> will cooperate because otherwise the Russians will install a puppet in his stead when he dies. Because that, they do like doing that. They do. Russians, to be yeah. fair. Like. <sighs> God, if only the Fuck. Soviets had been so good at doing that in Iran. I mm. mean... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and if you were wondering, and I very much doubt that you were, you probably forgot he existed, um, mm. Gil, the uh, uh, girl boss's son, uh, and also journalist for Truth, uh, turns out to have a very deep cover in a Muslimic extremist contact, but he doesn't like Bashar, and it is in this chapter that we find out that Gil isn't actually called Gil, his full name is Gilgamesh. <laughs> oh fuck off! <laughs> Absolutely go fuck yourself. It's so good. He's from fucking Fate Stay Night. Yeah. As I couldn't get out of my fucking head. <laughs> did, he, like, did he like menacingly like attach a beard and mustache to himself when he did that? <laughs> <laughs> he actually gets out a bow and arrow and starts just fucking shooting people. His oh, hair suddenly no. turns blonde. Um, I'm remembering everything from the anime that I could. There. Um, it's been a long time since I watched Fate Stay Night. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and in in a further plot twist, it turns out that the three uh, exploded bombs weren't the real targets. They were only decoys. So the real scientists <laughs> were off making real bombs supplied by the Russian mafia. That's, yeah. Oh, good. Because the Russian mafia famously just have nuclear bombs at their disposal. Oh, they do. The like... Russian mafia was completely without ideology, without scruples, without breaks. <laughs> what they did have were arms, contacts, money. They would sell anyone anything from plutonium to anthrax, from child sex slaves to organs, they'd get into be- bed with the devil and make him breakfast if necessary. 
sorry, it's sorry, 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 sorry. Hillary Clinton talking about uh, child sex there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like it's yeah. a bit of a bit oh, of a risky, not, risky not, introduction. Not the last time that will come up. Nope, um, it is not in relation to the well, Russians. I am from Britain, so I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> This book, this book was a fucking ordeal. Let me tell you. Are you expensing your therapy to our account, sort of thing? No, no, no. No, I think, no. no the, the, the damage had been done long before this book. Let me tell you. Um, um, but yeah, so in in a way, I don't know. The plot gets so stupid at this point that it it's really really difficult to keep talking about. Um, but I'm going to try to sort of skip some bits. and, and... <laughs> going to soldier through. <laughs> like, to be fair, so little of this is specifically relevant that we can skip quite a lot. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. This book could easily have stood to be about 100 pages shorter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and as it turns out, there's indeed maybe a traitor within the uh, the organization next to the present. And it may be the, uh, the, ah, the chief... What's it called again? The supreme military guy in the US, the leader of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. The head of the Joint yeah. Chiefs of Staff, um, and he may be the traitor. And you know, to get information, that might be necessary. Ellen, who had been appalled by the brutality of enhanced interrogation, now find found within herself a deep well of situational ethics. If torture would get the information out of him, <laughs> <laughs> if torture would get the information out of him, might it save thousands of lives? Then bring it on. <laughs> I this too have like, seen season one of twenty four. <laughs> it's just, it's just such like obviously a justification for horrible shit, that, like, <laughs> like that she has probably ordered. I mean, come on. Yeah. Oh, so God. is this basically Hillary Clinton does zero dark thirty? Is that what we're basically getting at? <laughs> it's, yeah. I mean, we it, yeah, we don't we don't get to the actual torture. By the way, there's a very stupid cycle that I won't get into, but I'll just read you one line where uh, sexy oh, Anna. I know. Sorry, can I predict this? Like, is the bit that you're not going to talk about? Is it like the six chapters in the middle of this book talking yes. specifically about not Benghazi? Uh, no, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, she doesn't address that in the book. I thought, right, I thought okay. you were going to say sexy Benghazi for a second. I'm like, wow, <laughs> stupid Libya sexy sure has Benghazi. Libya, Libya sure has changed. Um, <laughs> it's fair. Uh, do, 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 do they mention like a, a little known contractor who died during not Benghazi <laughs> by the name of, I don't know, a Repulsive Mouse or something? Do they like throw that in? Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's, it's a series of chapters where sexy Anna, her sexy cousin, and the C- News Inc. CEO girl boss have to escape the Russian mob through a series of prehistoric cave drawing tunnels in Iraq and head across the Pakistani border. <laughs> yeah. I, you know what? As a, as a sort of, as a sort of thing, saved I decided by to the check. noble prehistoric savage. <laughs> I, I, I decided to check um, who's running in the Libyan election, and what do you know? Gaddafi's son yeah, is running. Yes. So it oh, might well yes. be sexy Libya again at some point. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, I just, I, I love that the world is basically fail children forever and ever and ever. Yeah. Amen. Anyway, off, off we go to Pakistan. But first, a quick layover to see President, not Trump. Uh, <laughs> uh, you can go in, said the guard at not Mar-a-Lago. He wore an insignia Ellen recognized from their reports on the alt-right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like, President Donald Trump is being guarded by, like, a militia. <laughs> no, she, just, she just walks up to the guard and sees the Pepe on his lapel and goes, Ah, a Mimi. I, I recognize that. <laughs> is, is the Secret yeah. Service no longer in charge of the former president's security? Ellen asked as the SUV drove up. Supposedly, they are, said her head of security, but he's put his own people on the front line. He thinks the Secret Service is part of the deep state. Oh, wait, please read her description of the deep space. Yeah, yeah, well, please what, read what, what she says that? it is. Well, if that All means right. profoundly loyal to the United States and the position of the <laughs> president, but not the individual, then he's right, said Alan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, love it. Absolutely love it. Oh, this is, this is the highlight of it. I was like, I was recovering from my cold. <laughs> um, so I was reading this, and then it made me ill again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the deep the deep state is real and it's good actually. Is yeah. a hell of a take. What a powerful take to drop in your book, <laughs> your your weird book. Now, who possibly does this remind you of? 
She'd had her, pre her media outlets do profiles on Eric Dunn as his empire had grown, then crumbled, then rose again, each time more audacious, more bloated, more fragile. Like a bubble in a bath, it was ready to burst at any moment and release a... No, no, it was... I mean, yeah. It was ready to burst at any moment and release a stink. You know, like bath bubbles are so often wont to do. But let me let me let me read the description. Oh yeah, yeah, go for it. Like yeah. He was large. Immense in fact. <laughs> Sorry, I need to compose myself here. Huge. You can tell she wanted to say huge, but like <laughs> Ellen had met him many times, though only in passing at social events. She found him amusing, charming even. Now I will note Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump have been known to be social associates in the past. Um, vote uninterested in others and easily bored when the spotlight shifted to anyone else which like makes me think that she thinks he ran to spite her <laughs> like, mm. purely to spite her <laughs> and also he likes sex he does like is inappropriate with the assistant who is I will point out the best character in the book and then unexpectedly um, he turned to politics and won the highest office in the land but not she knew without help from people and foreign governments who plan to profit oh there it is <laughs> yeah. love it absolutely love it superb well how done, many Hillary. chapters has it taken her to say I was wrong <laughs> 32 but I will I will point out that if Russia did influence the American election enough to um to make Trump president or not Trump president. America interfered in the Russian 1995 election preventing the Communist Party from winning, leading to Putin becoming president. Yeah. Which means that they basically sowed the seeds of Donald Trump in 1995. <laughs> so, there you go. Yeah. It comes we'll back. Have to play the long game. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, in the meantime, some other dumb shit happens. But anyway, we're in Pakistan now, uh, and she's doing meetings over dinner to distract the Pakistani government from the fact that U.S. special forces are currently raiding the secret nuclear factory uh, owned and operated by the evil genius Bashir Shah. So that's why she's having dinner with the foreign ministry, because then nobody else is looking. Yeah, they're literally going, look over here. Yeah. And... Um... <laughs> Uh, and this is where we get some truly powerful analysis of uh, Middle and Far Eastern politics, um, especially in the wake of the Afghani drawback. With the Americans gone, the Taliban, after being given safe haven in Pakistan, would again take power in, in Afghanistan, and with them would come their allies, in some ways their international military arm, Al-Qaeda. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah. well, at, least, at least she's not saying to the Taliban and ISIS are allied because that was fucking weird when people said that. Yeah. Um, it was an Al-Qaeda intent on hurting the West, specifically intent on revenge against the United States for killing Osama bin Laden. They'd pledged it and now, with the help of Bashir Shah and the Russian Mafia, with the American withdrawal from Afghanistan and the re-emergence of the Taliban, they'd be in a position to carry the threat through in a more spectacular, destructive fashion than they had dreamed possible. That's how that's it's, gonna happen. Yeah, it's um, <laughs> it's very powerful. <sighs> oh, the, the, what happens is just it draw it like it's such it's it's. Do you know what it is? What ha the the big plot here is specifically a plot from a really like low tier RTS video game I played <laughs> in the two thousands. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I get that vibe. It, it's almost like. If Command and Conquer Red Alert was more poorly written and had a lot more cocaine involved, but somehow was boring. Actually, Adderall, <laughs> this is Adderall Red Alert. That's what it is. <laughs> That's what it is. Man, written by Hillary Clinton and Adderall fueled Westwood Studios. <laughs> Almost makes me want to read it, to be totally honest. Um... Yeah, and as in a in a even more more remarkable plot twist, Bashir Shah is actually at the Pakistani dinner, disguised as a waiter, serving Alan Adams her food. God, who, <laughs> as, who's doing this fucking bond shit in real life? Yeah. This is like this is the thing. Like as he inhaled her subtle scent, he wondered if he hadn't developed oh. developed a macabre crush on this woman. Well, it's nice that Joe Biden did get her appearance here. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit of hair. <laughs> <stuff. laughs> yeah, super strange. Yeah, Joe Biden actually the arms dealer, as it turned out. <laughs> a sort of a sort of reverse Stockholm syndrome. So close were hatred and love linked, comma apparently. <laughs> 
That, that is. Oh God. Why can't Can you... everyone just get along? <laughs> also, can people stop being quite so horny? It's really like upsetting I my do. reading schedule. <laughs> there, there is like a. I swear to God, there is a thing with libs where everything is like because it's not based on ideology. It's got to be based on be based on interpersonal relationships, and their interpersonal relationships are fraught with like unexpressed sexual tensions that have been sublimated therefore the entire world runs on horny yeah. it's like uh, it's too Amer- gross America truly the horny on main country <laughs> the, thing, the problem is whenever I think of liberals and uh, their like sexual proclivities I always think of that uh, fucking survey where it came back that like um, so t- it was statistically oh, no, can we like. Not talk no, about we're not talking games. about that fucking survey again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's talk about game. Whenever I'm on, it seems like that survey comes up as a super. Weird. I know, I hate it. <laughs> it's just, it's just you make us horny on main sin, and clearly that's, it, that's yeah. what it is. <laughs> Apparently, it's going around. Yeah, um, I mean, sin is the closest that we have to the sweltering, sultry east, you know, and he's oh just that sexy. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Why is this talk so lustful? <laughs> um, just, just. <laughs> DMs are open, that's all I'm saying. Um. Uh, in the meantime, there's been another plot that I won't bore you with that essentially revolves a slightly metrosexual cookie-baking ex-press chief for not Donald Trump. Um, but he has revealed yet another plot strand um, that there is a thing called the HLI, the High Level Informant, which is a chat room for right-wing extremists. Oh, it's QAnon. Oh. <laughs> oh, so Hillary Clinton's discovered four channel. Uh, what was it, was it? Nine channel or some shit. Eight channel. Eight one of them. Something like that. Some, of them. some other number. Eighty-eight chan. <laughs> okay, I've just, I've just, yeah, <laughs> I've just discovered that the meme I want to make doesn't exist because of that lustful tag. So, um, so look out for. Um, I probably have made it by the time the recording's out. Look out for sexy Viennas in your area. <laughs> <laughs> can, can we add Hillary Clinton into that when we tweet yeah, it? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I just need to find like a decent template for. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah at the end of the uh, sexy dinner in in pakistan um girl boss alan manages to dom uh, the pakistani president in the girl's bathroom into giving up his mm. secrets and what he knows about the evil plot um oh. <laughs> and it turns out that they're all in league with the russian president who is also the head of the oh. russian mob what's, what's the russian mob called is it the fsb <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's clearly. I mean, it may clear. as well be. It'll be a tracksuit mafia or something equally dumb like no, that. No, it's just called the Russian mafia, but with capital letters. That's how you know it's real. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you know they're serious. Oh, that's, you, got, you got me wrong. You fucking got me there. The Russian president made the oligarchs, he gave them wealth and power. He controlled them, and they controlled the mob. Um, the Russian em- mm. the Russian mafia, or in caps, was the threat <laughs> connecting all the elements: Iran, Bashir Shah, Al Qaeda, Pakistan. <laughs> famously, famously, very, very closely linked groups. All of them. <laughs> Have we got to the bit where she blackmails the the Russian president? Uh, no, that's that's about to come up because we are about yeah. to head off to Moscow. Where, it, it. where it's cold. <laughs> no, never. Take Moscow cold. It's more likely than you'd think, really. Yeah. Um, Breaking report coming to you from podcasting is praxis. Moscow cold. Taking a deep breath, Ellen stepped out of the plane with only an umbrella over her head to protect her. It was immediately snapped inside out, hit by a wind that had started in Siberia and raced across Russia, picking up snow and ice and speed before slamming into her. Yeah. Busy fucking gust of wind, that. <laughs> yeah, that gust of wind fucking... specifically targeted her. <laughs> talk about fucking... I know it's a fucking fiction book, but talk about main character syndrome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we have to be very clear. Like, it's it's only the Russian mafia and the Russian president and the oligarch whomst is bad because Secretary Adams very much like the Russian people, at least those she'd met. They were more than resilient. They were vibrant, full of life and laughter. Always generous and hospitable, ready to share a meal, a bottle. Ellen could never deny the fortitude of the Russian people. Though it struck her as a crying shame that she'd valiantly fought off the Nazis and fascism from the outside, only to see it creep towards them from within. Oh. 
So yeah, it's now it's time to meet the Russian president, uh, who also tries, I think, to bully assistant Betsy, uh, who swears like a sailor but dresses like June Cleaver. Um, <laughs> I don't know why. Every time she's mentioned that, he's mentioned. Um, and that is present. I'd like, whenever I talk about people that I've mentioned earlier, I always like to bring up their two most discernible character traits. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's sort of like a bystander NPC with like limited dialogue. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Mud crabs, horrible creatures. <laughs> <laughs> That's my line, Alistair. How dare you? Anyway, carry on. Maxim Ivanov was the real thing, a ruthless tyrant, schooled in oppression, both subtle and cruel. While not Trump mm. had a natural instinct for other people's weaknesses, what he didn't have was calculation. He was too lazy for that. But this man, this man calculated everything with a coldness that would get, have given Siberia a chill. But this not Trump guy sounds like a real piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. With a cold- yeah, like with a coldness that would have given Siberia a chill. Like, Jesus fucking Christ. How hard can you fucking travel it on? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what the president hadn't counted on, what he didn't see coming, was Ellen Adams, girl boss. He had not expected the American <laughs> Secretary of State, State to hop onto Air Force 3 and come to Moscow, to the Kremlin, right into his parlor. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he did, like... How did they get air clearance? <laughs> <laughs> I, I also, the Russians I also famously enjoy... will not allow an American fucking military aircraft into their airspace without going, wait a fucking minute. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> but I also like the one thing he didn't count on was summoning someone coming to call on the manager. <laughs> just yeah, like, no. Not, not, just, not just call the manager, show the manager... <laughs> A video. <laughs> yeah, you want to d- take this? <laughs> um, right, I, I'm not going to read the actual passage oh, I out it, because though. I really. Can- <laughs> yeah, you have it, but you can do it after. I tell me if I accurately describe it from yeah, memory. Yeah. Basically, she blackmails the Russian president with doctored pictures of him noncing. What? <laughs> like, in- <laughs> yeah, yeah. She reverse she- piss gates Putin. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> like that's it. That's exactly what. Yeah, I think I got that right. Um- <laughs> It isn't the first time you've seen photos like this, is it, Maxime? You've used them before yourself, and if you swipe right, you'll see a video, but I wouldn't if I were you. It's pretty awful. Not nearly as good as a piss tape. Yes, not nearly as good as the one where you're bare chested on that horse, though, though Gilgamesh tells me the horse does figure in another video. (laughs) Fucking Gilgamesh is such a Gilgamesh! (laughs) I can't Uh, cope with this uh, Gilgamesh shit. Comrade Hans! Fucking but hell. yeah, basically, he he's like, um, he's super mad. He's basically sufficiently blackmailed by the fake nonce images that he's like, no, nope, <laughs> can't have but, it. Yeah, hang on, right? If they're, if they're fake, right? Okay, sorry. Let, let's. I know I'm doing that thing where I'm applying obvious horse shit to a real world situation. No, that's but that's a different video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, well, so. yeah, but but I just like if they're fake then surely what happens is the Russian president gets his tech team to analyze them, demonstrate their fake, and it just goes on TV and says the United States has tried to slander a world leader with he, obvious forgeries. Lad's going to give of, me two minutes. I'm just going to take yeah. down the British government. Um, give me five minutes in Photoshop. And yeah, I, I was going to say, the thing is that he what he actually says he'll do is sue people, which is like, which yeah, is again, yeah, yeah. just like how Hillary Clinton imagines it would work. I, I will sue you. I will sue you, dear sir, in London. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> going to hire Jeremy Corbyn's legal team to sue Hillary Clinton. <laughs> Hillary Clinton. Clinton having to make a post on Twitter saying I made some defamatory statements for which I am very sorry. Please retweet. (laughs) Can someone make a fake Hillary Clinton tweet of her saying please retweet? Ah lads, I kind of want this to happen just for all the court tweeting of her that would happen from like the Russian ministry accounts. It would be fantastic. So anyway, the the Russian president lets himself be blackmailed uh, because the fake nonsense video apparently works and it turns out. Yeah, like, like in Crusader Kings 3, yeah. that's how it was. And it turns out that Bashir Shah, evil mastermind hyper-terrorist, uh, is actually in the home of f- former President Not Trump. 
Yeah. So he's there. Trump is hiding the terrorist. <laughs> who, by the way, at this point, they do know that he has nuclear weapons primed to explode in US cities. I think, yeah, yeah, course. yeah. There's three nukes that we know are somewhere <sighs> hidden in three cities in the United States. Um, but, and then if the theory yeah. is they go off, the current president is deposed, uh, President not Trump gets back in, and then the secret cabal uh, of not QAnon would get their wish because they would be supporting the president. And what would then happen, yeah, and- if you were wondering why are the Russians in this, is this, is the following. If Dunn gets back in, he'll be a pawn. The US might as well be a Russian state. Maxim Ivanov will be calling the shots. He'll install his own person as Prime Minister of Pakistan and make sure the next Grand Ayatollah of Iran is a Russian loyalist. Ivanov will really become the hyperpower he always claims to be. And then the Hillary Clinton analog will escape to the one place that hasn't been corrupted by cancers. <laughs> <laughs> this book will be massively improved by Tim Curry. We've got to be, like, yeah, let's be, let's be honest with ourselves. That, have you all seen that gif where someone's put Keir Starmer's yes. face on <laughs> yeah. that scene? It's so good. So yeah, they obviously they need to get the evil terrorist Bashar Shah out of uh, not Mar-a-Lago. But that's, of course, a real problem because then they'd have to, you know, invade the home of a former president. But fortunately, it's not really that much of a problem because uh, the special operators watched the president leave the compound and took up their position. Special operators. They could see the (laughs) the far-right militia security guards, private contractors with assault rifles and festooned with so many ammunition belts, they not only clanked when they patrolled, they could barely move. Oh, fuck By contrast, Delta Force operators rely on stealth and speed. They carry knives, guns, ropes, and tape. That was it. (laughs) It really really, really is a shame that Jamie's not been able to join us for this episode, because he would be loving this shit right now. Uh, He's going to have to catch up like everyone else. Yeah. (laughs) The success of a mission rests more on the training and character of a soldier than on their weapons. The far-right militia members, on the other hand, valued an Uzi over mental stability. (laughs) Oh. God, Uzis are just impossible to shoot, though. So you know. <laughs> anyway, the the special operas, the special forces super operators, literally do a no casualty speed run through Mar-a-Lago and bag <laughs> any percent. Yeah, and then they bag uh, Bashir Bashir Shah, who is literally in the kitchen pretending to be a cook, teaching the other cooks how to make curry. I'm not making that up. <laughs> <laughs> It, yeah, yeah, he's obviously an expert at making curry for reasons. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fucking hell. Anyway, we now reach the crescendo. So they bring hyper terrorist Bashar Shah, uh, not like to an interrogation room. They literally bring him to the Oval Office for an interrogation by the president and girl boss Adams herself uh, for reasons. <laughs> and this is the point where everything gets exposed for what it is and it turns out that some of the people in his staff i won't bother you with their names because it's boring um it turns out that at least two of them are level of, are members of QAnon, um and it's it- <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> is it named something other than QAnon? and yes it's named, it like R- yeah. it's named hli as in high level yeah, like the highland light infantry <laughs> yeah that's it oh no it gets even better it's a uh, it's it's <laughs> it's such a shame that jamie isn't here for this but let me read you a little bit of dialogue <laughs> hli is a site on the dark web right where these people share information beyond the dark web the police inspector <laughs> oh what if we go even deeper on the dark net Whoa. i didn't even know there was such a thing the web is like <laughs> welcome the web is like a universe it never ends there are all sorts of wonders um, and all sorts of black holes that's where that's i found just digimon. hli they're just they're describing <laughs> digimon what the fuck are they <laughs> like welcome to the next level <laughs> Anyway, it turns out oh, that the uh, the journalist who found uh, the doorway to the HLI place beyond the dark web, uh, he tattooed <laughs> the IP on himself over his heart because he too, was too much of a coward to I'm publish sorry, about it. What? He published. Yeah. He, he accessed I, the dark web via an IP address. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought it was a QR code. I got that I tattooed do. on me for nothing. <laughs> God, imagine how much of a twat you'd look with, like, just like a sleeve tat, and it just had the URL in it. And, like, <laughs> I am. Uh, I'm looking forward. You know, eventually one of these fucking NFT bros is going to get their actual NFT link tattooed as like a sleeve tat on their arm. Oh, I'm just yes. really looking forward to it. You know, it's going <laughs> to happen. 
oh, I cannot wait. And it's just, and it's going to be one of those ridiculous, bored-looking apes that are smoking a joint or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I am going to make it my life's to- mission to fucking snipe that URL and replace it with Goatsy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, although, to be fair, I, that Goatsy is about the one thing where I'm like, I would consider buy, wanting to own that and name it. <laughs> That'd be quite funny to just be like, I own Goatsy, you know? <laughs> like, just a certificate on your wall when your mum comes round. Oh, oh like, what, what's so, that? Anyway, we, it's, we, it's like my bachelor's degree, my master's degree, and the Goatsy ownership. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyway, we get this. We do get like a, a quite a brilliant uh, speech by Bashir Shah uh, right at the end when the minutes towards the nuclear explosions are, are counting down. Um, Fifty-eight minutes, and then all this goes away. Given a choice between Bedlam and the dictatorship, who do you think the American people will choose? Driven by fear of another in a state of terror, they'll do the terrorist work for them. They'll destroy their own freedoms, accept even applaud the suspension of rights, internment camp torture, expulsions, the liberal agenda, women's equality, gay marriage, immigrants will be blamed for the death of real America. But thanks to the bold actions of a patriotic few, oh, the, the wasps... They, got they few- will? Yeah, I know. Why <laughs> if that happened, eh? <laughs> um, any, anyway, uh, the, 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 the grand reveal of the plot is that the president's chief of staff is one of the, the leaders of the HLI QAnon network. Um, and, <sighs> yeah... They fucking wish, they fucking wish QAnon was actually in the White yes. House. Fuck's sake. <laughs> America, this isn't America, the chief of staff shouted. Do you think Washington, Jefferson, any of the founding fathers would recognize this country? Jobs for hardworking Americans are being stolen. Prayer is banned. Abortions are happening every hour of every day. Gays can marry. Immigrants and criminals are flooding in. Uh, yeah, so they do all this shit because if three nuclear devices go off in um, Washington, D.C., New York City, and for some reason, Legoland in Kansas City, uh, that's the third <laughs> nuclear bomb location. Sure. I about that. <laughs> well, because they're going to vaporize the Lego president they have there. Yeah. <laughs> that, he's, he's actually third in line to the presidency, a little known fact. Uh, do you know, this, this would be an, they could do an excellent comedy film off the back of this and have it, you know, them reading out the lists and then you get, and Legoland, what? And it smash cuts to, like, the bomb is hidden in a fake Lego nuke. Just kind of like blinking away. I would that, love it. That Absolutely has a, love it. That has a very Iron Sky-ish vibe to it. That I would <laughs> kind of enjoy. It, it, it makes me. It makes me feel like a kind of hot fuzz kind of filming style would really kind of suit it. To mm. be totally honest, but yeah. Anyway, so the uh, the bombs are uh, uh, diffused at the final moment. Fortunately, there was one in the White House hidden inside an MRI machine. But that can be diffused because there happens to be a uh, Secret Service member there whose experience is bomb dif- diffusal. So oh. he, he picked yeah, that character. You, you cut the red wire. Yeah, you cu- you cut the red wire every time. Don't cut any other. Wi- don't hesitate. Cut the red wire. That is yeah. my advice to everyone listening to this. If you have to defuse a bomb, cut the red wire. <laughs> I love two things about this. Number one, anything electronic being hidden inside an MRI machine. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 right? Uh, no, no, number two, the idea that a regular bomb defo- dis- disposal and diffusion technician um, knows how to handle a nuke. I love that idea. I love that image. It's like I'm just picturing your bog sounding like police you know, training course, Shoot. like, okay, uh, week four, now we handle the rogue nuclear state nuclear weapons. To, to be Just fair, like, it is a dirty bomb, not an actual, like, oh, proper Oh, okay, yeah. okay, sorry. I thought it was, like, a nuke, and I yeah, was just yeah, sitting there yeah. going... Going hard at vaporizing Legoland. You yeah, know? yeah. You, you need to get you need to get like an actual physicist in, not like me, not dipshit physicist, like actual physicist <laughs> in to deal with a nuclear bomb. Like this entire book is about physicists the state knows about. That is, that is like a lot of this book. An awful lot of this book is talking about physicists, which is why I found it so uncomfortable. Yeah, to be honest. I mean, I can't begin to underest to like explain to you how much shit plot we've just cut out of this book, book oh, summary. Yeah. We've saved you. Yeah. Anyway, so all is well, and the whole family of girl bosses, everybody is back together. And what are they doing? Well, they're drinking Chardonnay, of course. Hey. <laughs> they're watching on the telly as two Supreme Court justices are arrested, as well as six members of Congress. 
So, you know, the police are doing their job, as they would in a liberal society. They, they try and set up a sequel yeah. at the end, too. Um, it's so... <laughs> she, yeah, girl boss Adams is back in her office, and she gets a file. Oh. She dropped her eyes. As she read, she took a long, slow gasp. A sarin gas, anthrax, Ebola, Marburg virus. She turned the page over. The list continued. Every horror known to man, every horror made by man was there and not there. Missing, unaccounted for, from the U.S. arsenals. Dun, dun, I'm, gonna, I'm, dun. Just gonna, I'm just going to say, it's really interesting that the ne- the villain of the sequel is going to be Om Shinrikyo. <laughs> it's going to be really interesting when that comes out. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, uh, we. I really hope there's a sequel to this fine, fine novel that we've read for you tonight. Yeah, I highly, yeah. Um... I'm Don't assuming I'm assuming there's going to be a sequel sometime in like 2028 after Trump has finished his second term. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, I imagine so. Once we've really sold out to the Russians and the Ayatollah is a Russian puppet as well, that thing that is definitely happening. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to see that happen. Yeah. That'd be really interesting. <laughs> I'm so tired of these fucking people writing books. President Putin comes to yeah. us. Yeah, me too, David, weirdly. Like, <laughs> in, a ju- in a just world, Hillary Clinton would be relegated to putting this shit on DeviantArt. <laughs> yeah. She, <laughs> so she would have to put this on an archive of our own and it would have to have much more sex in it. <laughs> yeah, like, my my kind of take on this is a real tragedy of this kind of shit getting published is I don't read fan fiction, but I know, I know, monkey on typewriter principle, there have to be fan fiction writers and other people who are far better writers and have got far more interesting stories to tell. But they'll never really get published and they'll never really get out there in this way. Whereas you just get this utter wank from people whose sole claim to any kind of literary merit is, I did a job in the Halls of Power once. Yeah. this I, I When you mentioned that, I was reminded of um, an author who just publishes on his own website. And hmm. like... He's written something like three million words for his like one book, and has started writing oh, a second book. <laughs> no, no, no. But like, but like, he's but he's legit a really good writer, and it's like some weird superhero story that my partner really likes, but I never got around to reading because I'm not reading three million words. Um, just spoiler alert, everyone. Uh, but like, he makes he makes like decent money, but it's so much better than this. Like, mm. so so much better than this. Too long, though. Needs to cut out about two and a half million words to get me interested. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but all is well, because, um, you know, the president now trusts his girl boss secretary of state, and they're all back home drinking Chardonnay, and the American liber- liberal experiment continues on unabated, without flaw, as it ever was. I, I do I do also like the about the author section. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> It's it's yeah. Um, <laughs> it's exactly what you'd think it is. Yeah. Also, I feel bad for her co-author because it seems like she's actually a good author. No, sorry. If she wrote <laughs> this, she's not a good author. I don't care. Like, it, no. Yeah, like she she's won like tons of awards and shit, and I'm like, wow, why are you doing this? Yes. So is Aaron Sorkin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a fair point. I was about to say that, that you know, you can bo- be both right, as in she could be good in the technical sense, but by doing this, she's definitely not good in the moral sense. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of uh, of your stream, Sen, Nan, is there by any chance anything you want to plug at here at the end of this episode? Um, yes, because this will be released, I assume, before I do my big stream on Thursday with the Windmill Man. The Windmill Man is coming on the stream on Thursday, which yes. will, I presume is when this will be released. Will so be. that'll be kicking off at 730 um, at twitch.tv slash SK the Crusade. Does he have like any be... idea what he's getting himself into? Or I, he must have an idea because he's tagged in the tweet where I was like, "Do you have any questions for him?" And everyone replied with every tweet he's ever written. <laughs> he must have like some <laughs> conception of what's about to happen. Like it is, it is, it is going to be interesting. I'm really, I'm really, I'm really, to really it. looking like, forward to it. some fucking just young Lennon four twenty in the chat saying Fox nonce and the entire stream being shut down. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, we're gonna, we're gonna, no, no. I promise everyone this. We're gonna talk about the Fox. Like, it's an entire yes. category of the stream. <laughs> is it gonna be called the struggle stream? Mm-hmm. Like, is I that what it's gonna be? I, I haven't really thought of an appropriate title for it. Because, because on the one hand, I really want to do the usual thing where I like 
make do a, do like pick the most famous meme about a person and just make it the title. So you know when I review a uh, Mason book, it's Spice. Yeah, yeah, tweeting at windmills or something. Yeah, I was like, do I want to do like a fox based thing? I actually went out to look for a fox pattern shirt to wear on the stream. Sadly, <laughs> could not find one. Have you <laughs> have you considered just riffing off what you did with the, the the Tim Curry costume and just going with the Steve Buscemi costume and adding a clipboard to it? <laughs> um, I I really like that costume in, in the YouTube video. Um, that Hell was yes. that was like that was my favorite costume. That well, to be fair, the only <laughs> other costumes I've done is me dressed in a bright shirt drinking alcohol and me dressed as a John fake Duncan doctor. look. Yeah, I did the John Duncan look for a while, <laughs> um, but I was just drinking mojitos on camera. And you could see in that video, I was progressively getting more and more drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, David, do you want to plug our many, many contents for this December oh month on the gosh. Patreon and in other places where I swear to God, we are driving ourselves insane to put all this out. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Okay. Yeah. So we've got, this week, we've already released a two-part fucking episode behind the paywall. <laughs> on the fucking Has Fallen films. Jesus uh, Christ. <laughs> uh, we've got an episode about uh, Vatican finance. It's more interesting than it sounds, I promise. <laughs> uh, we have, on the same next week, we have Rob opening the Cursed Mystery Box. And then on Boxing Day, we have a special Q&A episode for patrons. So, uh, yeah, look forward to that. We've also got a James Bond episode, the Tom Clancy episode... And then, you know, we're into January by that point, so... Yeah, so there's You've like... Too many yeah, episodes. then I've got another book. No, I haven't really. Yeah, so <laughs> there's like book. there's like four, I think four episodes exclusively on the premium uh, this month, and it's only five quid, and it's all yours at... Uh, Praxi uh, at what, what is it again? I can't pronounce things anymore. Patreon.com forward slash PraxisCast. All right, see, there you go. And follow us at PraxisCast, yep. and um, yeah, all that stuff. Goodbye. Cheerio. Bye. See ya.